welcome to today's devotion. We today are looking in the 18th chapter of Luke, and we're looking at verses 9 through 14. The heading above um, this particular section of Scripture in my Bible says the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. So both and. And uh, before we go into it today, let's take a moment and pray, asking God to um, reveal to us through his word what he would have us know. Father God, we thank you for your word, for in your mercy you have sent your son to teach and to reveal through the, his parables and through his teaching your truth, your logos, if you will, the, your very mind and thoughts. And as we read and go into your word, it is your spirit that opens our minds to be able to to realize the, the truth that you share with us. So we pray that you in so faithfully, once again, open our hearts and minds to hear your voice as you speak to us through your word. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 9. He, meaning Jesus, also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee was standing and praying like this about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other, because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. So this is another parable similar to the one that we read previously, where there is a heading that Luke gives already giving the meaning behind, or the, at least the intention behind, the parable that follows. And this we read in verse 9. He told a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. One of the most difficult parts of our nature that we deal with, and everyone has it, and no one can escape it, is that of pride. Pride or arrogance is yet another way to describe flat out rebellion. Rebellion against God includes not only disregarding what God says, but also rebelling against the reality that all of who we are is completely dependent on God. None of us brought ourselves into this world. None of us in coming into this world knows what we should do, when we should do it, how to do it. None of us have that wisdom. So, Pride or rebellion or arrogance is two part. One is just to deny and reject and rebel against our need for God, our reliance upon God and the relationship, the natural relationship that we have with regards to that dependence. And the other aspect is to disregard anything he has to say. Now, from pride then, we see this need to be self justified and without reliance a healthy reliance on god 
the pride will morph into performance and how we perform in the sight of God. We, we create a performance grid and grade ourselves and others according to the grid that we create. And from this grid, it, it supports or is intended to support our own pride because we can easily look at other people and see that we're doing better than them on the grid. And all of that has the appearance of righteousness. And most people buy into it, even religious people, even, even though we may know that we are all in need of forgiveness, that none of us is righteous, no, not one, and that all of us um, ne need God and cannot do anything apart from him, we still have the tendency, that prideful, that rebellious tendency to restructure the grid. Now, the grid in our culture may be popularity. The grid in our culture may be financial. The grid in our culture may be health or appearance or wealth. Or the grid may be religiosity and religiosity is the hardest grid to remove because it 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 has a it has the appearance of godliness to it now it is something that jesus teaches against on a regular basis and so we see that in this parable already in verse 9 it, it gives us the meaning behind the parable, which is directed towards this, this pride, godly pride or self-righteousness. And he gives the parable in a very specific manner, saying one person is a religious leader. And whatever the case may be, religious leadership always has a grid of a moral um, performance to it. And the other person is a tax collector. And without understanding the, dy the dynamics of being a tax collector, we can't see the disparity between the Pharisee and the tax collector. The tax collector, in essence, was someone who was on behalf of a pagan government, a pagan empire, extracting taxes from God's elect from God's people in order to support and pay for their oppression from a pagan empire. So a tax collector was not, was someone who has betrayed their own people and as such also betrayed the ver their very God. They betrayed everybody. There was nobody. They didn't, they weren't Roman. They didn't belong to, the Roman Empire, they were Jews. They didn't belong there, and they certainly didn't belong in the Jewish community because they betrayed it all. So they were the worst of the worst. And so it was this person that went to the temple realizing the depravity of their life and just taking that depravity and realizing they can't even bring it before the Lord because they're deserving of nothing. And in that state of complete need and vulnerability and humility pleads for God's mercy. And it's that state of vulnerable humility that God honors. The humble, God will not reject. And humility is simply the recognition, the complete recognition of our dependence on God. And sometimes when we may not, or we may admit that we have a dependence on God in certain areas of our lives, when it comes to godliness or our religiosity or our spirituality, it is very easy to construct a performance grid in which we can deceive ourselves 
and think that we're actually performing better and actually may even deserve some of God's grace because of how well we're performing. Now, God certainly does reward people for discipleship, but that's a different thing than righteousness. Discipleship's reward is working with God for the transformation of our character to enter the kingdom and to live in the kingdom. The reward is the kingdom. With regards to self-righteousness, we try to create a grid in which we can actually feel as if we earn the kingdom and not receive it. In discipleship, we receive the reward is the kingdom that we receive. We don't earn it. We receive it. And even that is a gift from God. And it's a, it's, it's, there's, there's a very fine line mentally as we're thinking this thing through in our spiritual life. Discipleship does not mean that we earn it or earn anything. What it does is it prepares us or we work with God so that we are better able to receive it. Last um, de de devotion, we talked about prayer. If somebody is persistent in prayer, it does not mean that they are earning more of God's love. That does not mean that they are earning more of his favor. It doesn't mean that they earn his blessing. The persistence in prayer means that we are being prepared to receive what God wants to give us out of the abundance of his love. Not earning, but the ability to receive. And this is... This is, is, is very profound. The, the conflict that Jesus had during his three and a half years of ministry was primarily with a religious sect in Judaism called Pharisees who had a very developed grid of spiritual performance. And because of that, it bred and, and, and created, it fed the nature that we all have of pride, arrogance, and rebellion. But the danger of it was it was covered with a spiritual or godly uh, overlay, which is even harder to deal with. So this, um, he concludes it saying, I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other. And he concludes the, the last few words because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This humbling is something that we do. God will never force us into it. It is something that we do. Um, we consider it being broken. And in many ways, we do need to be broken. We, it's a terminology that... Um, that um, it's helpful if we understand the brokenness that's a sacred breaking that allows us to be real and humble and honest with God in terms of our need for God. God never wants us to be broken, but he also will break the chains of pride that will keep us from relying on him and, and knowing him and receiving from him the gifts that he has for us. Well, thank you so much for sharing today. Next time we um, go into the, uh, the scriptures, we'll come back into Luke chapter 18. Until then, may the blessing of God in all of his goodness and grace and love be yours. And may you receive it in all humility and joy and peace. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.